Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. I don't even know why I'm so excited, probably because the Amy show is coming up, but look at that wall behind me. I've been decorating my wall, you see that? All those tags are from different events where I spoke, and I, I have more, I have a lot of them I, I haven't even been able to put up there because I lost them or whatever. Those, those are all from speaking engagements and stuff. How cool is that? One of the things I love about this career field is all those, uh, you know, opportunities to go out and speak with you guys. But anyway, the reason I'm making this video today is because I just caught word that one of my quotes was denied. It was denied for the worst of reasons. And now I'm, I'm actually asking you guys, am I wrong here? Am I really wrong? So what happened is I have a customer who's got... Hmm, let's see. Oh, oh, is this going to work? I've got a customer who has a series of 25 LifePak 15s. And I believe I quoted them about one hour's worth of labor per device, which is already kind of low, right? Because if you think about it, if you have to create a new equipment record because it's a new customer and you have to document, plus you do a full D DFib PM, and also, LifePak 15s have a bunch of options. They have entitled CO2, they have SPO2, they have ECG, they have a second paddles connection. They have a bunch of options depending on whatever this hospital bought. Now, I do not know the options, so it's always better to quote high than quote low. But I quoted one hour per device at a regular labor rate, and we were apparently astronomically high. I already knew that it was gonna be high, but again, I don't know the, the, the license options or anything. I don't know what I'm walking into. And it's not like you can expect a customer to always give you that info. So it's always better to quote a little bit high. But I quoted one hour per device. Anyway, my quote was astronomically high compared to this competing company. And this competing company quoted LifePak 15s at $50 per PM. $50 per PM. Now, I'm, I'm really questioning, guys. Am I wrong for thinking that that is a really low number? What do you guys think? Because the LifePak 15, the PM itself, if you do the whole thing the way it's supposed to be, it's going to take you a long time. And then you have to factor in on top of that the documentation of everything, you know, generating the field service reports for the customers, yada, yada, yada. So am I really wrong for thinking that what is a $50 LifePak 15 PM? All I can think is that in order for that to pay for itself, you're talking a 15 minute PM. That's the only way that the numbers make sense because if you think about it, you're going in and what, doing a quick energy discharge and what else would you be doing? I mean, it's 15 minutes. Maybe a self-check, like a defib self-check. Maybe that's all they're doing. They go in, maybe they do a, a defib self-check, maybe do a quick discharge, and then let's say they do an electrical safety. Hmm, you think they're really doing that too? Let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. So I'm saying 15 to 20 minutes, and then let's say they're really fast at doing documentation. They can do their documentation in about... 10 to 15 minutes. That puts you at about 35 minutes. $50 per DFib PM. I just don't see how that's possible. And the company that quoted that is a very major player in the third party realm. I just enter a publicly traded company. If that, if that also helps you guys out, because there's only a few of those, right? How? Can you do 25 DFib PMs at $50 each? I bet you, I'm going to bet my whole paycheck, they ship out one technician, like a Biomed one, and he slams through all 25 before lunchtime. I bet it. How much you want to bet? So, the reason that I'm maybe a little upset is because there are certain companies out there they, they, 
are in a race to the bottom. Does that make sense, guys? A race to the bottom, which means they they just throw a real low ball offer out there. Now, I get it if it's a loss leader. A loss leader is when you take a loss at something because you expect to profit at something else. So let's say I offer to do your defebs at $50 per PM, but I get the contract for all of your hospital beds. Now I take a loss leader on one because I'm gonna make it up on something else. That's the only way that I see these numbers making sense. So I don't even know, I don't have a calculator on me, but let's say 25 times $50, that's what, a couple thousand dollars? 2300 something like that? $2,300? Now let's, let's do some math on that, guys. So let's say you send out three technicians and they do a full life pack 15 p.m., which is about an hour. I know that we can do it for less, all right? I know, guys. Don't have to tell me. Let's say we send out three people and it takes an hour, including documentation, to do the PM, document it, um, do all the options, entitle CO2, et cetera, because that would take about an hour. Um, three technicians for one day, let's say they're all biomed ones, let's say they make $250 a day, that's about $750. At $2,300 for the whole quote, you're already half of that in labor. That means that you're you're on minimal profit. Again, I just don't get it. And that's that's with three technicians at one hour per PM. That's what, 23, 24 uh, PMs for the day. If you do three technicians, and let's say eight hour day, they can do like eight of them per day per technician. So um, I don't know guys, what do you guys think? This is a publicly traded large third-party company and they're bidding LifePak 15s at $50 per PM. I just, the math isn't there for me. I just don't see it. What do you guys think? Let me know.